In the fall of 2009, the city of Satellite Beach authorized an investigation designed to assess its vulnerability to rising sea level and facilitate discussion of potential adaptation strategies. The project was completed in the summer of 2010, one year later. As an initial step, the Comprehensive Planning Advisory Board, a volunteer citizen committee serving as the city's local planning authority, approved a series of updates and revisions to the city's comprehensive plan. If approved by the city council, these amendments would provide a legal basis for implementing an adaptive management plan and specific actions designed to mitigate the city's vulnerability to sea level rise. More than two years have passed since the City Council was presented with the recommendations of the Citizen Advisory Board, yet to date they have taken no action. The City of Satellite Beach is not alone, as there are many other examples in which the conclusions of experts or recommendations of resident advisory boards did not translate into legally binding policies or plans. We could find no case in Florida wherein the hazard reduction recommendations made in association with the sea level rise vulnerability assessment were implemented as new planning guidelines or management strategies. A review of other states and regions in the United States and in other countries like Australia suggests this lack of action is typical. In the discussion which follows, we'll review the results of the City of Satellite Beach Vulnerability Assessment, which led to the Citizen Advisory Board's recommendations, and then discuss why the City Council, like many other governing boards around the U.S. and beyond, do not implement the adaptive management strategies recommended by their own consulting experts, citizen advisory committees, or professional staff. The City of Satellite Beach is located in Brevard County, Florida, one hour south of Cape Canaveral. The maximum width of the island is two and a half kilometers, wherein live roughly 10,000 residents. 98% of the city's landscape has been developed. The city's consultants began the vulnerability assessment by quantifying the city's elevation, or topography. In this image, the city's elevation is illustrated using a spectrum of colors. The highest elevations shown in red are associated with the Atlantic Ocean coastal dune system. Elevation in local relief decreased westward to less than a few feet as depicted by the presence of colors like yellow and finally green. A topographic profile for the city is shown in the right panel of this slide. The resulting profile depicts a geomorphology typical of barrier islands along Florida's east coast. The highest elevations are found adjacent to the Atlantic Ocean and associated with the coastal dunes, which average about 15 feet above sea level. Three quarters of a mile inland, elevations drop to less than six feet above sea level. These areas consist of urbanized lowlands, wetlands, open water, and dredged canals. The consultants then use the elevation data to construct a hypsographic curve for the city. This curve illustrates the cumulative percent of city land as a function of increasing elevation. As implied by the pattern of colors on the previous map, these data clearly indicate approximately 50 percent, or one half of the city's landscape, is less than six feet above sea level. The hypsographic curve also provides a basis for predicting exactly how much of the city will be flooded as sea level rises. For example, a rise of two feet will inundate approximately 5% of the city landscape. Long-term water level records indicate the rate of sea level rise has been accelerating over the past century. The rate of rise was about 1.7 millimeters by the 1950s. By the 1980s, sea level was generally reported to be rising at a rate of 2.5 millimeters per year. And most recently, high-precision satellite data indicates sea level is rising at 3.3 millimeters per year. This acceleration in the rate of sea level rise is a consequence of climate change. Sea level is expected to continue rising at an ever faster pace, and by the end of this century is forecast to rise between 2 and 6 feet above present. 
To emulate the city's vulnerability to rising sea level, the city's consultants constructed a geographic computer model of its topography and then flooded the city landscape at one foot intervals to the maximum elevation currently forecast by scientists, that is, six feet above present. As can be seen in this map view of the city and city limits, 5% of the city will be flooded during the initial two-foot rise. Flooding, shown in blue, is restricted to the wetlands along the Banana River shoreline in Grand Canal. Should sea level rise reach plus four feet above present, 25% of the city will be inundated, primarily from rising Banana River water levels again. Finally, at plus six feet, 50% of the city is underwater. Clearly, rising sea level will present serious challenges to the city of Satellite Beach and its residents. By the summer of 2010, the Comprehensive Planning Advisory Board had approved a series of updates and revisions to the city's comprehensive plan. The proposed changes were made to several elements of the city's comprehensive plan, including future land use, as shown here. The board's recommended language typically included terms like sustainability and sea level rise. Yet by the end of the year 2010, or three months after the report had been submitted, the City Council had not acted on the committee's recommendations. The City Council cited concerns regarding how the state's principal planning agency, the Department of Community Affairs, might react should they amend the comp plan as was proposed to mitigate the effects of sea level rise. By the summer of 2011, however, just a few months later, the Florida Department of Community Affairs adopted new language which acknowledged sea level rise as a coastal hazard and provided a pathway by which local governments could incorporate mitigation plans into their existing comprehensive management plans. Yet despite these amendments, the City of Satellite Beach City Council has yet to consider the recommendations of its own advisory board, professional staff, and consulting experts. What happened? For nearly a decade now, coastal communities like the City of Satellite Beach, larger coastal municipalities, counties, states, interstate associations, and even the federal government have been assessing the vulnerability of the built and natural environment to sea level rise. However, none of these assessments have yet been translated into legally binding comprehensive plans or adaptation strategies. This is because property owners and investors of low-lying or high-hazard areas have pushed back. They've organized, attended public meetings, lobbied elect officials, and even threatened to sue. This pushback and the lack of planning which follows is beginning to worry experts. The pushback arguments against pending sea level rise policies and plans are generally the same. Our property will become a liability as real estate values drop and insurance premiums rise in response to its location in a newly defined high hazard zone. The new policies are based upon flawed science and questionable projections from scientists whom are conspiring for their own personal gain. In the absence of specific action from residents in support of recommended changes, which is often the case, the scope and breadth of proposed adaptive management plans are often scaled back if they survive at all. This tug of war for control of coastal policy and planning will likely continue until landowners and investors directly impacted by the proposed adaptive management policies are provided some sort of economic incentive to cooperate. Residents cognizant of long-term costs associated with the business-as-usual approach organize in support of adaptive management policies and legislation. The general public must actively participate in this debate and support climate change science and policies which emerge from these findings. Until then, those with the loudest voices will continue to emerge victorious in their efforts to block the implementation of local adaptive 
management plans. In the absence of such plans, coastal cities like the city of Satellite Beach will ultimately go bankrupt in their efforts to rebuild infrastructure damaged or destroyed by the effects of climate change and sea level rise.